going on guys? It's me, David Eckhart Films here, and welcome back to another episode of NHL 17 Boston Bruins Revival. In this episode, we're going to be doing year number three of said revival, and uh, let's get right into it uh, and check out our starting lineup here. So first line, Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, and David Pasternak. Second line is going to be David Backus, David Krejci, and Frank Vetrano. Third line is Adam Ernie, Jacob Forsbacher Carlson, and Zachary Sinitian. And our fourth line is going to be Brett Ritchie, Danton Heinen, and Jake DeBrusque. Now for our defense, first pairing is Jonas Brodeen, uh, along with Charlie McAvoy. Second pairing is Brandon Carlo and Tori Krug. Third pairing is Jacob Zaboral and uh, Rob O'Gara. Now quickly to take a look at uh, the special teams and everything like that, the extras as well. Um, it's pretty much just it's what you would imagine would be the def the defensive type players are on the penalty kill the offensive type players are on the power play it's pretty much that simple and uh, everything else fills itself out and we're going to take a look at goalie right here and of course it is Tuka Rask our franchise goaltender and Vianney Vavalainen is going to be our backup so then after that our scratch players are going to be Adam McQuaid Josh Anderson and Matt Grizzlick and there's going to be no one on the no lines. And now let's take a look at player morale and see who is what in relation to who is what on this team. Uh, Patrice Bergeron is a leader. David Backus is a leader. Zachary Sinitian is a presence. And Rob O'Gara is a presence. Now let's get into captains and jerseys. You can see Patrice Bergeron is the captain. He replaces Adeno Chara. David Krejci is an alternate. And Charlie McAvoy is an alternate as well. So here we go. Getting into the meat of the video, the simming. And I'm going to try to quickly blow by the preseason right here, but a whole bunch of notifications and scout scouting stuff is going to come up. But let's see how we do here in preseason. We win the very first game against the Sabres, but of course there's that scouting. God, I hate the scouting. It, I mean, you don't, I don't even use the scouting when it comes to drafting time, but here we go. Oh, man, we are 4-2. Can we beat the Canadians? Can we? We have to beat the Canadians. Come on, come on. Oh, my God, we lost to Montreal. That's never good. Uh, so we finished preseason 4-3. and three. Hopefully we can do a little bit better than that but we're going to do our episode Lee uh, Thanksgiving Sim, and by that time, uh, the Sim is over and it reaches Thanksgiving. You can normally tell who's going to make the playoffs and who isn't. So I'm looking to start off pretty strong here in the season. We start off with two wins. Actually, I look at that. We're on a four-game point streak, five-game point streak. That's what I like to see, and then Tampa Bay ends that. Versus the Rangers now, we lose to them as well. Three straight losses. That is not looking good. Four straight losses. We lose to Philadelphia. Five to Detroit versus the Rangers again. And we lose to them. Six-game losing streak. Finally, we break it against the Senators. We win 3-1. to one. Then we beat Philly in a shootout versus Anaheim. We destroy them for nothing. And now, pretty busy week here. We got four games, but more scouting stuff. God, I hate this scouting stuff. Okay. At Philadelphia, we win there. At Montreal, we do uh, lose 2 nothing. Then we get absolutely smeared by the Panthers. We beat the Capitals somehow. Uh, lose in a shootout to the Jets. Uh, lose to the Capitals. Uh, they, they get their revenge there a week later. But as you can see, we start off the season and we are sixth in the Atlantic. That is definitely not good enough, which means we only have about 10% chance to make the playoffs because we definitely are not in right now. And uh, yeah, that's not looking good. So, uh, we're 23rd in the league. Let's see what the problem is right here. I, I'm assuming it's going to be both things because when you're just that bad, you're that bad at pretty much everything. And yeah, as you can see, we're pretty down there in goals for per game, goals against per game. Uh, yeah, we're not in the top half there either. We're going to have to scroll down just a little bit more. Yes, our offense and our defense are not performing, and I don't know what it is. We've just got to turn it around, and hopefully we can, I don't know, sneak in the playoffs somehow. Or maybe we can completely turn this around. I don't know. It's still early in the season. Patrice Bergeron with eight goals. David Pasternak with seven. Brad Marchand with six. Uh, for assists, David Pasternak with 12. Brad Marchand with 11. And Charlie McAvoy, the defenseman, with 11. That's good for him. Uh, points goes to David Pachanak with 19, Martian with 17, and Bergeron with 13. Now let's take a quick look at plus minus for our defensemen and see which defensive pairing is doing what. You can see that Rob Ogar is a plus 5, Zabor is a plus 3, uh, Brodine is a plus 1, Krug is a minus 4, McAvoy is actually a minus 6, and so is Brandon Carlo. So it looks like our third pairing, our third defensive pairing is doing the best out of our entire defense. That is amazing to me. And as you can see, it's not Tuka Rask's fault. He is .917 save percentage. That is absolutely perfect. Uh, if you can continue that throughout the season, I will definitely make the playoffs. We just sort of got to turn up a little bit. And Vavalainen's getting smeared just a little bit. 
we got to fix him, and he's got to step up to the plate and hit a home run, if you know what I mean. All right, anyway, back to hockey. Here we go with the simulation. We lose our very first game back, but here we go on a two-game win streak, and then we lose to Chicago. So we're like, we're very up and down here uh, early in the season. Still only December, but I mean, soon you're going to be saying, oh, it's January. They're going to be like, oh, wait, it's February, and they're like March, and you're like, oh, frick, we're screwed. So we got we got to win these games. This is the meat and bones of the season. We lose three straight, four straight, actually. Then we beat Carolina, then lose to Los Angeles. We are not doing good. We are 11, 15, and 3, but we get two wins right there, back-to-back, -back, uh, three points. Or, no, sorry, that, that, that would be uh, five points in two games, right? A win is, yeah, a win is two points. What, what is wrong with me? I don't know. But you can see right here, we're starting to turn up just, just a little bit. Hopefully, we can continue that. Uh, we did lose to the Blackhawks there. Now, versus Tampa Bay, I'm going to decline that trade offer. I don't really want to trade anyone right now. We do beat Tampa Bay. We do beat Buffalo. We haven't allowed a goal in four, or sorry, three games. We have not allowed a goal in three games. And then finally, um, we're just, we're destroying now. Four straight wins, then a loss to the Jets, then a loss to the Capitals. We finally come back and beat the Panthers. Or sorry, not the Panthers, the Hurricanes. Then we beat the Panthers. Then we beat the Islanders. And right now we're starting to turn up just a little bit. And we're, we're hoping to keep this going right here. This looks nice. Look at all of these wins. All these guys having their morale improved at the top. As you can see, we're, we're, we're just on a roll right now. Um, although, the, oh man, three straight losses. That is not good. Okay, the three straight losses, if you take that out, I, I think we'll I think we'll be fine. We just got to start winning. Come on, you, we we can do this. We can do this. We can pick it up and start winning. I'm not trading anybody. Oh my God, these losses. <sighs> to Toronto in a shootout. Okay, that's not good. We are we are losing to Calgary in overtime. We are not getting the job done in any way, shape, or form. We've got to do better than this. We looked up for a little bit. Now we're just crapping the bed. What is happening? We're 24, 24, and five. But then back to back wins again. Oh my gosh, every time we uh, go even. And wins and losses, we somehow just win uh, two straight games. We lose to Nashville the following week. Then Minnesota we lose to. Then the Sharks we lose to. Look at this. 4-1, 4-1, and then 4-0. Finally, we beat the Kings. And now versus Toronto, we win 6-3. And that is going to stop that simulation there. We simmed up pretty much to the trade deadline. We are still sixth in the Atlantic Division, and it's not looking good. We are going to have to have a like fantastic couple of months here if we want to make the playoffs. And as you can see, we are the 23rd, or sorry, 22nd best team in the league. I think that's like right where we were before. We have not improved at all. It looked like it wait, for just a little bit, but uh, we just couldn't really pick up traction. Uh, you can see that we're not really scoring that many goals per game. So our offense is not working, and our defense is not working either. I think our defense might have gotten a little bit better. I feel like I scored for a very long time for our defense. Power play and penalty kill, two minor things, but I still like to take a look at it. Our power play is actually doing pretty well. And now for our penalty kill, uh, you can see that we are not in the top half, which is not that good. Yeah, yeah, we're right towards the bottom. So that's not good. Maybe we're, that just makes up, like, that's why our defense is bad. That's why the... the statistics for our defense are so bad because of the penalty kill. I don't know. You see Marshall with 21 goals, Pashnak with 20, Bergeron with 17, uh, Pashnak with 35 assists, David Krejci with 30, and Brad Marshan with 27, along with Bergeron and McAvoy, who also have 27. Uh, Pashnak with 50 plus points, that is nice, Marshan with 48, and Bergeron with 44. Now for defensemen, you can see Brodin's a plus uh, 8. Uh, Ogar is a plus three. Zaboral is a minus two. McAvoy is a minus three. Uh, Carlos is a minus seven. And Krug is a minus seven. So our second pairing is getting crapped on uh, pretty much. And McAvoy is struggling just a little bit. And that's not good. I want to see him a plus player so he can develop even more. And you can st still see, look, it's not Tuka Rask's fault. He has a point nine one seven save percentage. And I, I got to switch something up here. Adam Ernie, he is a minus one with only six goals. And I'll take a look at Jake DeBrusque. He's a plus two with, uh, what was that, nine goals? I, I took a quick look at it. I, I, it's sort of like gazed over my eyes, if you know what I mean. I, I, I just didn't see it. So we're going to move Jake DeBrusque up to the third line. And uh, what are we doing here? We're going to put Jacob Forsbacher Carlson on the uh, penalty kill. Yeah, we're going to put him on the penalty kill next to Danton Heinen. Both of them are sort of defensive-minded forwards, and I want to get them some uh, developmental time there on the penalty kill. And it's just the second penalty kill, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. And we can't get much worse than we already are. So here we go. Let's see if we're going to win. Look at that three straight shootout wins, and then an overtime win. Oh my god, we are on fire! Look at all these wins! Six straight wins right off the bat! Seven straight wins! And then Toronto gives us the finger and ends that. 
And now we're going to try to start up a new one again. Here's, here's two in a row. Here we go. This is exactly what we need. We are starting to do it. We're making the comeback. What was it? We're, we're, we're 22, 23. That is insane. Look at it. We're, we're coming back. We are coming back. Screw the Red Wings. And then we beat the Canadians. There we go. There we go. Versus Dallas Stars. No, we lose them 4-1. to one. And then we lose the Canadians the next week. Come on. We can't We can't start losing games now. We're, we got to make the playoffs. <laughs> oh, Nashville. How could you do this to me? At Detroit, we win 2-1 to one versus Buffalo 4-3. to three. And then we also lose to... Uh, Tampa Bay right there versus the Panthers and then versus the Canadians we win and we actually finished the season with uh what was that with a 43 win here I, I I'm, I'm having trouble seeing the screen still I'm sorry yeah yeah 43 wins so we do we finished third in the Atlantic so we came back all that way look where we are right now we came from 22 to 12 in a couple months that is absolutely insane what a streak that we went on to make the playoffs. This team is so resilient. I'm like, well, I couldn't believe it. We actually came back. That's insane. Our offense is still struggling a little bit, and our defense is still struggling a little bit. But they did both rise from what they were before, which is nice. Uh, power play penalty kill. Let's take a look at it right here. Uh, our power play dropped out of the top half. I believe it was in the top half last time. Yeah, and uh, it's now towards the middle uh, even more. Uh, penalty kill. Uh, yeah, we are definitely not up there for some reason. Uh, we're going to scroll all the way down here. And you can see, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're still struggling on the penalty kill. And there's a freaking bug on the screen. God! Okay, anyway, uh, right here you can see Brad Marsh in 33 goals. Uh, David Pochnock with 25. Patrice Bergeron with 22 uh, assists. Uh, David Pochnock with 49 assists. Patrice Bergeron got 40. David Krejci with 38. And Charlie McAvoy also with 38. Points, uh, David Pasternak with 74, Brad Marchand with 70, and Patrice Bergeron with 62. Now take a quick look at the defense once again. Uh, Jonas Brodin finishes a plus 14, Rob Ogar is a plus 8, Zabor was a plus 2, McAvoy finished minus, that's a little bit concerning, he's still 92 overall. Uh, I hope that didn't really affect his morale or anything. And you can see Tori Krug finishes a minus 11, he just got absolutely rocked, and um... Uh, you can still see Tuka Rask is still a .917. So we had a very, very nice season. Uh, even Vianney Vevalainen uh, sort of rebounded a bit for his safe percentage, and that's nice. Now let's take a look around the league and who did what. Vladimir Tarasenko leads the league in goals. Uh, assist goes to Nikita Kucherov with 69 assists right there. And points goes to Steven Stamkos with 101. And yeah, just take a look at that. Stamkos, Kucherov, and Drew Wynn led the league in points 1, 2, and 3. So, I mean, they're, they're going to be stacked this year. They're obviously in the Eastern Conference, so we might even have to face them. Jeff Petrie on the Montreal Canadiens finished with the best plus minus. He must have been playing beside uh, Shea Weber or something like that because he had a phenomenal season. And uh, save percentage right here. Uh, a real goalie, uh, Jonas Corposalo. Jonas, it's Jonas because there's the two O's. See, I'm learning. I'm learning how to pronounce these names. Uh, he has the best save percentage out of everyone, uh, out of the real goalie. So here we go in the playoffs. We're going to be facing off against the Montreal Canadiens. The longtime rivalry returns to another playoff matchup. And let's see what we can do to these Canadiens. Uh, we did just beat them 3-2 to two, uh, just a couple days earlier. So now let's see what we can do against them here. Game one, first period, who does what? And it's going to be Jonas Brodeen with the opening goal. Second period, they answer right back with Drew Stafford, former Boston Bruin. But then we answer back with Tory Krug. Both of our, our two of our defensemen scored. And then in the third period, we shut it down and win two to one. Nice defense there in the third. I'm really happy about that. Tuka Rask is your first star, Price your second, and Stafford your third. So now here we go, game number two. Can we come? Can we steal another game? Yeah, we're at Montreal. Can we steal another game? That was a steal right there. That's a nice win. Oh, so okay, okay, so game two, first period, we get lit up, absolutely lit up. Max Pacioretty twice, and then Hudson once, or Hudden, sorry, Hudden once. And now second period, oh man, Jordi, Jordi Ben, yeah, yeah, Jordi Ben, the defenseman, and Tori Krug there. So it's 4-1 to one Montreal, and yeah, we just could not make any sort of comeback there in the third period. I didn't really think it was going to happen after the, the Max Pacioretty just went off like that. So Pacioretty, Price, and Ben are the three stars. Now here, at game number three in Boston. We're returning to Boston. Can we put on a show for our home fans? Come on now, let's take the series lead. First period, game number three, nothing. Second period, it's going to be Brandon Carlo getting the one uh, one goal lead. Now third period action, can the Bruins hang on? Yes, they can. Patrice Bergeron puts the icing on the cake, and it's a shutout for Tuka Rask. As you can see, he's the first star, Carlo the second, and Carey Price the third. So Rask and Price, I think I've noticed every single time that they are 
uh, both of them are uh, two of the three stars, which means it's a very uh, goalie versus goalie type matchup. So now first period game four, it's going to be Frank Vitrano opening up the scoring, putting Boston up by one, but then it's going to be Hudden and Alex Galchenyuk answering right back, putting making it 2-1 uh, Montreal. And in the third period, Jabrus scores, but it's just not good enough as Plakanitz and Alexander Radulov put Montreal up 4-2 and give them the win, and this ties the series back up to a piece. So here we go. Uh, Alex Galchenik is the first star, Frank Vertrano is the second, and Radulov is the third. So, okay. Here we go. This is this is where this is where it begins. All right, we could either go up three to two or down two to three. So I mean, we we need to score here. We need to do it fast. We need to put the Canadians away. And here we go. David back is opening up scoring here in the first period. Uh, second period, nothing happens. Can the Bruins shut it down again? Third period action. Yes, they can. Frank Vetrano puts the icing on the cake, and the Bruins walk away with a 2-0 shutout. Look at that. Tuka Rask is on. Fire right now. David Back is the second star. He had a pretty nice game as well. And now here we go. Game number six. We are back in... Uh, no, no, no. We are back in Boston now. Yeah, that's right. We return home. We could put the Canadians away here. Can we do it? First period action. And there's three goals for the Bruins. It's going to be Patrice Bergeron, David Back is in Bergeron again. 3-0 Bruins. In the second period, we are just lighting them up. David Backus and Brad Marchand. Third period, we shut the door. And another shutout for Tuka Rask. What was that? Three shutouts? That's absolutely insane. Tuka Rask is on fire. And as you can see, look at all the other matchups. Uh, in the league as we're going to face the Tampa Bay Lightning with all of those guys who got all those points. That is going to be scary. Uh, you can see Blackhawks, Jets, uh, Kings, Stars, and uh, Blue Jackets, and Islanders. But yeah, with the, the, the Tampa Bay Lightning, this is going to be extremely, extremely tough. A guy like Steven Stamkos, Nikita Kutrov, expect to see them score a lot of goals. So first period, game number one here in Tampa Bay. Can we get the job done? Yes, we can. Zachary Sinitian opens up scoring second period now. And they're going to have to respond right back. There's Nikita Kucherov and Brad Marchand and Kucherov again. So tied 2-2 two to two going into the third. Who can come ahead? And it's going to be Adam Murray for the Bruins. And the Bruins are up 1-0 in the series after winning 3-2 to two, uh, with a game-winning goal in the third period. Kucherov is your first star. Rask is your second. And Stamkos is your third. So now here we go. Game number two still in Tampa Bay. We did steal a game which is nice. We, we stole a game against Montreal, which is nice, and we won that series. Hopefully, we can do the same thing right here. Nothing happens in the first period. Frank Vitrano scores in the second. 1-0 Boston. Can they hold on? No, they cannot. Jonathan Druin and Ryan Callahan give the Bruins the finger, and they advance. Uh, they, they, what did I say? They didn't advance. They won the game. They win the game, and the, uh, the series is tied back up at 1-1. Uh, Andre Vasilevsky is in goal. I forgot about him. He's a very solid goaltender as well. So this team, this team is just stacked with players. First period, game three in Boston, tied up one to one. We stole a game. Let's win two right here and go up three to one. So now here, there's Zachary Sinitian in the second period, opening up scoring. And the third period, Steven Stamkos with uh, how much? Uh, 15 minutes left scores. And then in overtime, Alex Kalorn puts the Tampa Bay Lightning up through to one in the series. Oh my gosh. Rask is the first star, Vasilevsky is the second, and Kalorn is the third. So here we go. Game number four in Boston. We were unable to win one at our own place last time. Can we get it done now? First period, game four. Let's go. Let's see. And it's going to be Patrice Bergeron scoring on Vasilevsky. Second period, nothing happens. Can the Bruins shut the door like they've done before? A shutout. Oh my gosh, it's anything but. The Bruins explode in the third period. Brett Ritchie and David Back is in Bergeron, and there was just a trash time goal for Tampa Bay. But, um, yeah, the, just excellent offense there in the third period from the Bruins. Rask, Bergeron, and Pasternak are the three stars. And with the series is tied back up at two. Now, game number five in Tampa Bay. Can we steal another? We have to steal another. First period, and they go up two to one. Sanishin, Drew in, and Cedric Paquette open up the scoring. Second period, nothing happens. The Bruins need a goal now. Or will Tampa Bay shut the door? I don't know. And it's going to be Steven Stamkos putting them up three to one. And Bergeron gets one goal. And that's just too little too late. And they do not win the game. So the Lightning go up 3-2 to two in the series. The Bruins need to win two straight games if they want to advance to the next round. So here we go. Back in Boston. The support of the fans. Can we do it? First period action. Let's see right here. It's going to be David Krejci opening up scoring. 
And that's a nice goal right there. And then the Bruins explode again. This time in the second period. Sanishin uh, followed by Kucherov. But then Bacchus and Krejci just like that is 4-1 Boston heading into the third. Can we finish the game? Yes, we do. Zachary Sanishin puts the Bruins up 5-1 and ties the series back up at 3-2-3. Rask, Sanishin, and DeBrusque are the three stars. And look at that. Sanishin with two goals and DeBrusque with three assists. I mean, that, that, those young guys are getting it done. So game number seven, back in Tampa Bay. This is going to be this is going to be larceny. Not steal this game. This is going to be larceny. First period action. Can we beat Stamkos and Kucherov? Let's find out. Nothing happens in the first period. Nothing happens in the second. Third period action. Who's going to win the game? Ah, oh, we're doing a live time simulation. Here we go. 16 minutes left. No one has scored. Who is it? Oh, no, Patrice Bergeron. He gets the job done. Patrice Bergeron. But they have to play defense. There's 10 minutes left. I might have I, I might have accelerated a little bit too early there. Six minutes. Five minutes. Can the Bruins hold on? Three, two, one. Yes, they do. And the Bruins advance to the next round, beating the powerhouse of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Remember, the Lightning were up three to two, and they could not shut the Bruins down. The Bruins come back. And here we go. In the West, it's the Blackhawks and the Kings, the two dynasties of the uh, near the 2010s. And then here we go, the Blue Jackets and the Bruins, another Metropolitan Division rival. Or I mean, we're, we're really not their rival, but I mean, we lost to the Rangers last year. They were in the Metropolitan, and now these guys are in the Metropolitan too. So I just consider them. You, you know what I mean? I hate the Metropolitan. I hate everyone that is in the Bruins. Here we go. And game number one, they're gonna open up the scoring with Boone Jenner and Pierre Luc Dubois. Dubois. Dubois, I think it's, it's Dubois, right? Yeah. The second period, nothing happens. Third period, Jacob Force Baca Carlson gets too little too late. And that is a 1 0 series lead for Columbus. As you can see, they have Jonas Corposala, who's one of the best young goalies in the league. Actually, he was the best goalie uh, statistically in save percentage this past season. So, um,. I mean, it's going to be tough getting the puck past him, but I think we can do it. I think we can do the Boston way, the hard-hitting, pounding. Yeah, there we go. Actually, no, we're down 3-2. to two. I, I, That was a little uh, too early to celebrate there as well. But David Backus, Brandon Saab, Pierre Luck Dubois, and Danton Heinen, and uh, Brandon Dubinsky. And out of all of that, it's 3-2 Columbus heading into the second. Let's see if the Bruins can respond right here. Yes, they can! 4-3 Boston. Brad Marchand twice. Look at Brad Marchand getting it done. Third period action. Who's going to pull ahead? And it's the Bruins! Jonas Brodeen with one second left blows it right by Corpus Salo and denies them an, of an overtime period. Oh my gosh, what a game. Martian is your first star. And now we're heading to game number three in Boston. The return to Boston. Can we put a show on for our fans? First period action. Let's see what happens. And it's Brett Ritchie opening up the scoring. And now second period, the Bruins with a 1-0 lead. Oh, no, Columbus responds. Brandon Dubinsky now with two goals in the second. Third period, the Bruins need one to tie. And they get two to win. There is David Krejci and Brett Ritchie again, putting the Bruins up 2-1 to one in the series. And there are the three stars, Ritchie, Dubinsky, and Rask. So game number four, still in Boston. We could potentially go up 3-1 to one in the series, and that is extremely critical. First period, game number four. Let's see. And it's going to be Brandon Saad, David Backus, and Brett Ritchie again. Brett Ritchie's on fire. 2-1 Boston. Second period, the Blue Jackets go right back up with Boone Jenner and William Carlson. Third period, the Bruins need one to tie. Oh, no, they don't get it this time. It does not happen. And the series is all tied up at two. Carlson, Wenneberg, and Saad are the three stars. So here we go. Game five in Columbus. We, we're going to have to steal another one here. There, It's tied at two. Can we get the job done? First period action. And let's see. It's going to be, oh, man, Olivier, uh, Oliver Borgstrand. Sorry, not Olivier. Oliver Borgstrand opens up the scoring for Columbus. Second period, nothing happens. The Bruins need a goal, and they don't get it. Brandon Saad. Oh, no, it's just like the Montreal series. 3-2 Columbus. And as you can see, Corpusalo, Borgstrand, and Saad are the three stars. The Bruins need two straight wins to advance. Here we go in Boston. Don't go down in your own stadium. Don't do it. Don't do it. First period action. Let's go. It's going to be Adam Ernie with the opening goal. And here we go. And oh man, here come the Bruins. Pierre Luck Boy, followed up by Zachary Sinitian and David Poshnarok. 3-1 Boston heading into third. Can we hold on? Let's see. Yes, we can. Borgstrand makes it a one-goal game, but Patrice Bergeron shuts all that nonsense down. And the Bruins 
are one win away from heading to the Eastern Conference Final. Or, sorry, this is the... What is wrong with me? This is the Eastern Co God! The one win away from heading to the Stanley Cup. Here we go! Game number seven in Columbus! We gotta steal one. We have... This is gonna be Lars... This is worse than Larceny. This is punishable by death. First period action. Nothing. Second period. It's gonna be Nick Foligno and Tom Pyatt. Don't go down like this. Come on, Boston. Two goals! It's gonna be a live time simulation. 17 minutes left. I'm looking at Bergeron. I'm looking at Marsh and Poshnok. Even one of the young guns. Someone score! 10 minutes left, 5 on 4, power play, 5 on 3, 5 on 4, guys, come on, the power play, 5 minutes, 4 minutes, 3 minutes, don't do this to me, we gotta go to the Stanley Cup sometime, right, oh my god, David Savard, and then David Backus prevents the shutout, but we still lose 3 to 1 to freaking Columbus. Oh my god, to the Columbus Blue Jackets. If you would have said this, like, I don't know, five years ago, everyone would just have laughed in your face. That's just, aw, oh, man. And you can see they're going to be facing the Kings in the final. I'm rooting for the Kings right now, I can tell you that. I hate the Metropolitan Division. Oh my god. First the Rangers, now the Blue Jackets. What's next, the Penguins or the Capitals next year? Dear god. Oh, man, this is rough. And they actually go on. They beat the Los Angeles Kings. That's unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, as you can see right here, we're going to sum up to the draft and see if we can fix this team even more and hopefully even steer them on the right path and possibly even get past the Eastern Conference freaking final. God! Oh, I hate it, man. I hate it. You get that close, you go that far into the playoffs, and then you just lose like that in a game seven. Oh, Thomas Blakanitz retires, Tyler Bozak retires, uh, Miguel uh, Grabowski retires, Dominic Moore, former, former uh, Ranger and Bruin, retires, uh, Gregory Campbell, the guy broke his leg and finished this shift for Boston. I will always have respect for him. Marion Gabrick retires, Mike Camilleri retires, Matt Molson retires, Brian Bickle retires, Chris Storburn retires. Uh, right wingers now. Let's see. Radim Verbata retires. Lee Stepniak retires. He was also a former Bruin for a little bit. Uh, Patrick Eves retires. David Clarkson retires. Chuck Kobasaw. I don't even know who that is. Defenseman Duncan Keith. Oh man, the Blackhawks. There goes the dynasty. There goes Taze, Kane, and Keith. Those were the three main guys. And Crawford, I guess. And uh, Keith is gone, so that's unfortunate for them. They still do have a pretty rock solid defensive core with Yalmerson and uh, Seabrook, though. But nothing like uh, compared to how it would be if they did have Keith. And you can see Pecorine retires. That's a little sad. I do like Pecorine. Uh, Finnish goalie. You know, I can respect my Finnish goalies. You know what I mean? Because of Tuka Rask. Tuka is the best Finnish goalie uh, in the entire league. No, I, I, that, that's biased. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's take a look at the stats, though. As you can see, our offense was about middle of the pack in playoffs. It could have been just a little bit better. And our defense, though, was actually very, very good. We were second in, uh, in the entire playoffs in defense. So that's very, very nice. Uh, Bergeron and Bacchus both with eight goals. Bergeron was just fantastic. Sanishin also with six. Poshnok, 13 assists. McAvoy with 12. Bergeron with nine. And points goes to Patrice Bergeron with 17. Poshnok with 14. And Bacchus with 13. So we had some bright spots there in the playoffs. Obviously, we made it to the Eastern Conference Final. Um, I'm just sort of joking around there. But, I mean, we I do want to make it past the Eastern Conference Final. That is the goal of the series to win a Stanley Cup. Uh, but as you can see, our defense was pretty rock solid there, except for our bottom pairing. They finally came back down to earth, and uh, the other uh, two pairings actually did very, very well. And Tuka Rask, again, is not to blame. Rask has been perfect throughout the series so far. Point nine four one. He was tremendous. And uh, take a look around the league. Oliver Borgstrand led the league with 12 goals. Man, he was on fire. I think he scored like once. A yeah, he scored like... Only once against us. I, we, we sort of shut him down. Dowdy and Kopitar both have 14 points, uh, which means they were on fire. And Borgstrand and Toffoli both tied with 21 points. And I think I said points when I meant assist for uh, uh, Kopitar and Dowdy. But anyway, uh, plus minus goes to Seth Jones and David Savard, who both are a plus 12. You can see Jonas Brodin there and uh, Charlie McAvoy in second and third place, respectively. And now for goaltenders, who had the best save percentage? It was actually Tuka Rask. Look at that, point nine four one. He, I mean, he was just absolutely tremendous, but we could not get the job done for him. And I'm getting a little bit scared that he's going to start to decline, but let's take a look at awards really quickly. The Columbus Blue Jackets win the Stanley Cup. The President's Trophy goes to the Chicago Blackhawks. They were on fire as well. Uh, Los Angeles Kings win in the West, and the Blue Jackets win in the East. Now for individual player awards, Steven Stamkos wins the Art Ross. 
Uh, the heart goes to Stamkos as well. The Norris is going to go to Eric Carlson, Mr. Jesus himself. No, that's Connor McJesus. I'm sorry. Tyler Sagan. Oh, man, how's that Sagan trade paying off right now? He wins the Lady Bing. What a big trophy to win. Oh, my gosh. There's no trophy better than the Lady Bing. Uh, sarcasm, obviously. Uh, Jonas Corposala wins the Constantine, the Vesna, and the William N. Jennings. That is the hat trick right there for goaltenders. Uh, Brandon Carlo wins the Bill Masters thin again. I think that was the second time. And Bergeron again. What was that? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That is... He had four, right, right, right? This That was five last year. Six this year. Is that six? Six Selkies? Am I counting right? Holy mother of God. He is the best defensive forward of all time, period. And look at this. They just absolutely dismantled Los Angeles in the Stanley Cup. It wasn't even fair. 4-1 victory. That must that have been the most lamest matchup ever. What the heck, Columbus? I hate the Rangers. I hate Columbus. And for the past two years, the team from the Metropolitan has won. So hopefully, if I lose to Crosby next year, I think I'm just going to quit this series. I'm just going to delete it. Or if I lose to Ovechkin, all right? I'll lose. I'll even lose to the Canadians before I lose them. I'll lose to the freaking Canadians. But here we go. We're looking at a defenseman right here, Markinen. In the first round, is this a first round pick? It is a first round pick. He's a medium top six uh, potential offensive type defenseman. I I did not get to see his handedness, so I hope he is good. But uh, I hope I hope that's going to be a solid pick for uh, in the future years. I mean, these these picks sort of still do matter because if I get like a superstar, then that means they'll make it up on the team in time by the uh, time this series is over, or maybe right at the end where I set the team up to ride off into the sunset. You know what I mean? We're gonna get Lav in there. He sort of sucks. Actually, no, not sort of. He does suck. Uh, Frost, can we get something here? God dang, fourth round AHL top six forward medium potential. It's it's rough. It, it is hard being me. And um, yeah, that, that, that was rough. Only three picks, and I only liked one of the three. So here we Oh, man. Look at this contract. Look at this. Eight years, $6.2 million for Charlie McAvoy. I'm, I'm, look, look how much cap room. Look how much cap room I'm spending on him. But he earned it. Charlie McAvoy is God. All right. He might be... He might not win the awards or the Norris. Who needs the Norris? You know what I'm saying? Charlie McAvoy is the greatest defenseman of all time. And this is only his, what, like third year, second year? Oh, my God. He's only 90 overall now. Imagine He's 21 and 90 overall. All right, imagine when he's like 28. Or he'll be like a 99 overall. That would be freaking perfect. Right here, this sort of makes me sad. Adam McQuaid, we sat him out this past season. He's getting older. He's angry with us. He's 74 overall. And I choose not to resign him. I thank you, Adam McQuaid. He's he's truly one of my favorite players on the entire Boston Bruins uh, roster. And uh, as you can see right here, we're gonna sign a whole bunch of AHL guys. Uh, what guy like Chris Bork, uh, Joshua Winquist, Tommy Cross right here. The captain, the former captain, I should say, because we uh, sort of gave that up to Nola Chari and Tim Schaller. Um, Peter Solarik, we're going to dump him, right? Yeah, yeah, we dumped it. Peter Solarik, that that low potential. He might have lo looked good for a little bit there in the couple starts that he did for the uh, Boston Bruins when he played on that second line with Krejci and Vetrano, I think it was. He looked pretty solid, um, but we're not going to bring him back. I'm sort of uh, low-balling these guys just a little bit. Uh, we're sort of getting up there in cap room, and that's sort of the thing that cost the Bruins the dynasty in the first place was the cap and the bad cap decisions. So I don't really like playing around with the cap, but it looks like we're going to have to do that this time. You can see everybody that accepts it there. McAvoy accept. Varlarmov actually rejected, and this is actually my mistake. I'm going to break the fourth wall for a second. I, I forgot to sign him back. He was one of the goalies we drafted, I think, a year or two ago, and um, when he hit free agency, I just completely forgot about him, uh, which is unfortunate. I'll... I'll check I, I i don't know it's sad i i just didn't get to see but right here you can see all of the other ahl type players we're signing um i registered pretty much uh all of our main nhl players uh i registered their their contract what, what, what am i saying they're qualified i qualify their offer you know, i don't know the terminology guys what is wrong with me right now i don't know uh well no we do offer a contract to pierce lark what am i talking about uh anyway raw man right here David Backus, again, the cap room. The, we're getting up there in cap. Look at that. I have to get rid of David Backus if I want to sign these young guys. Thank you, David Backus, for everything I've done. He came from the Blues, and he's, he's a warrior. He's a nice guy um, off the ice. On the ice, he's an absolute monster. And we're going to trade him away for Austin Watson of Nashville, and they do accept that offer. Now, right here, Brandon Carlo has been uh, tended, or tendered an offer sheet uh, for three years by the Arizona Coyotes. We are going to uh, accept. We're going to raise. We're going to. We're going to do the same offer, and then he'll accept our offer. So, 
We got Brandon Carlo back. That's all that matters. Forget what I'm trying to say. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Jake DeBrusque, we're going to give him a two-year deal. Look at that. He only wants one point something million dollars. I will take that any day of the week. Uh, he's going to be a superstar. I, 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 I can just smell it. All right, I can feel it in my bones. He's going to be a beast second line forward on this team, second line left winger. And uh, he accepts the offer. I think he played on the yeah he played on the fourth line last year. And Heinen also accepts the offer. I do like uh, Danton Heinen. He goes a little bit under the radar sometimes, but he is a nice. Uh, I'm trying to make him into a nice defender, but he's more of like a grindy type guy. And uh, Jacob Forsbaka Carlson, uh, 22 years of age, definitely want to bring him back. He is pretty high up there in overall. What is he like 80, 82, 83, 84? So he's sort of like the Ryan Spooner. Uh, roll right now, but he's actually going to reject our offer. That is unfortunate, which means we're going to go right back after him and uh, see if we can get him back, offer him a lot more money right here over the course of two years. And yeah, he's 84 overalls. Yeah, so he's he's like the uh, Ryan Spooner pretty much, except uh, younger and hopefully he'll evolve into a better player because he has that medium top six potential. Uh, Spooner, that medium top nine potential. So uh, I, I do like Jacob Forsbaka Carlson. I hope he develops even further in the future along with Dubrusk and Sinitian. And uh, that's going to be the end of this episode, guys. Comment, subscribe. Remember, everybody, just go to school. Dankar Films out. Peace. This team is getting there, baby. We're winning the Stanley Cup. Woo-ha!